All right. Um, so yeah, this is uh, our new and notable features and assessments uh, plus uh, sort of Q&A info session uh, afterward. Uh, and I'm Brian Story. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about myself in a second. Uh, but I basically wanted to give folks a chance to see what, what's new in our product, uh, new in, in the features that we offer, uh, as well as give folks a chance just to ask questions, almost like an office hours uh, sort of session. So I've set aside uh, the vast majority of our time today will be for that Q&A. Uh, the first part about new and notable features will be relatively short, um, but I do want to make sure that folks get a chance to ask their questions. Um, and so, like I mentioned, I'm Brian Story, uh, and I'm actually, uh, I just, uh, my title just changed. I'm now the director of programs. Uh, so, uh, but I do teacher engagement as well. Uh, and so I basically design all of our PL, uh, do our school and district partnerships. Uh, Jan, I think you and I may have uh, corresponded on support uh, at some point, if you see Brian in support on any of the email signatures, that's me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I kind of have my hand in, in many different cookie jars. Uh, but uh, happy to be here with y'all today. And I thought we would start with, uh, what do you most enjoy about assessments? Uh, and if you haven't used assessments before, then you can just say, what are you? What most excites you to learn about assessments? Um, and I'd love for folks to either share aloud or, or feel free to share in the chat. I'll share. We sure. are not officially using it, but I have some teachers that are dabbling in it. Uh, we just adopted IM360 this fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about the potential to um, use it for um, keeping track of checkpoints and summative assessments and things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Kathleen, Siobhan, any, any additions to that? Um, I, I've used it um, as a homework session to um, really see if the kids um, understand what we did in class today, and I appreciate the help that can be given. Um, I'm interested in looking at, we just started uh, illustrative math, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of, the, for the Q&A part, I'm kind of seeing like where, if you have things to go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I'll be happy to answer uh, your questions. I will say uh, assessments primarily, we host all of the student facing assignments from the curricula. And that's basically like, that is our wheelhouse. That is what we do. Um, but more than happy to answer uh, any any additional questions about uh, how we support IM implementation. Absolutely. Uh, you helped me today, Brian, I think, or followed up on my, I can't have, I don't have access. So I'm looking forward to jumping in now that I have access and I can assign it to my classes to see what it looks like um, for the feedback part. Mm -hmm. I thought I recognized your name as well, Siobhan, and happy mm -hmm. to be here today. Uh, yeah, not a problem. And uh, happy to answer any questions you have today that might uh, help you know, ease that transition into getting started as well. So, um, all right. Uh, so I want to make sure everybody leaves the session uh, confident and ready to utilize some of the new uh, features that we have in assessments to support teaching and learning. Most of the, uh, the new features I'm going to talk about today uh, are centered around new problem types. We're really trying to expand uh, the amount of ways that students can interact with the content, uh, which means at just adding better functionality, new functionality to the platform uh, to allow us to you know, get as close as possible to what students might actually be doing on problems uh, within their curricula. And so along those lines, I'll kind of go through uh, what's new in the student and teacher experiences. And uh, and then the final piece about new and notable will just be on uh, previewing new content. So just want to address uh, IM360 and hopefully I can answer some questions on that. Or if I can't, then I'll bring that to our content team and make sure that they can uh, and follow up with folks. And then uh, we'll have some time for Q&A. Uh, like I said, the new and notable features piece is you know, relatively short. Uh, I want to spend as much time as possible answering questions uh, for as long as you all need. Uh, and then we will wrap up. And so to start with the student experience, uh, I just kind of want to go through a few things. So uh, I mentioned those new answer types. Um, and there are really three new answer types that uh, we're, we've added in so far, and we're going to continue to add uh, more of them. Uh, and those are drag and drop, 
uh, support for our multi-answer box problems. So problems where students really have multiple places where they can put answers in, uh, making sure that we can you know, give students that experience, uh, as well as uh, the drop-down option uh, for when students can select uh, from a drop, or are supposed to be able to select from a drop-down menu. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've also updated student feedback. So for example, if students have three different components uh, to an answer, so they have to uh, give numbers in a sequence and they're given the rule and they have to say, what are the next three terms in this sequence? We will actually give them feedback on each individual component instead of just telling them like we did before, this is correct or incorrect, right? So we can help students to zero in a little bit more uh, into uh, you know where the, where the misconception might be happening or if they need help, they can, you know, kind of pinpoint that one component of the question where they need help uh, to, to help the uh, formative process go uh, more smoothly. Uh, so feedback does now appear. And you'll notice here also, feedback used to just appear under the answer. So when students put their answer in, a box would appear underneath saying this is correct or incorrect. Now they just get a checker and X symbol right next to the answer in that answer box. Uh, so we brought that in to be proximate uh, to the actual answer. And then uh, we also updated uh, a few other pieces here. So uh, like I mentioned, we give more detailed feedback uh, and they get feedback on those individual components, even when it's a question like this, right? Uh, we will tell them which selections or which ordering uh, parts of the ordering are correct and incorrect. And the other cool thing I like, uh, previously, whenever there was like an image in an answer, we couldn't put that in the actual answer box. Uh, so you might've seen something like the question to the left where we put choice A, choice B, choice C, and choice D images uh, above. And then we just put A, B, C, D as the, where students can pick the answer. And now we actually can embed those images directly in the answer option so that students can choose the, uh, the correct answer without having to look up at the answers at the top and then pick the one that corresponds at the bottom. Uh, so just a little making interactivity there a little bit easier for students. And I wanted to give folks just a chance to kind of explore this a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to put a problem set ID, and this is just a useful feature. Um, and what you can do with this is in assessments, you can actually uh, go over here when you're logged in and go to search by ID, type that ID in, and like, let's say someone makes a custom problem set and you want to share it, or, uh, you know, you, you want to share your problem set with somebody else, you can take that ID from the top of the set and input it right here underneath the uh, search by standard bar by clicking search by ID. So I put that in the chat and this problem set sort of gives a preview of all of the different uh, new item types that you can interact with. Some of these will look similar like uh, to what we already had, like the open response questions. Uh, but each of these, uh, for the most part, are designed to give you an idea of what these new item types look like. And you can click the triple dot on any given question to preview as a student. And that's going to take you into the student experience so that you can play around with some of these questions. Uh, so I just want to give folks uh, about three minutes or so to kind of explore that problem set and maybe try out a, a couple of those different problem types. Uh, instead of just me telling you, I want to give you all a chance to actually interact with it a bit. And then uh, we'll come back together in about three minutes uh, and see if folks have any questions about those before uh, we talk about the, uh, the new features in the teacher experience. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start our timer here. And I did put that problem set ID in the chat. Feel free to let me know if you have questions and we will come back together in less than three minutes.
Hey, Brian. When I put that in, it says no, like no standards, <laughs> no matching standards. Yeah, uh, so you don't want to use the standards bar. You're using underneath oh. underneath the standards bar. You'll see. Uh, oh, search, search by ID. Got mm -hmm. it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, so uh, obviously folks can continue to to sort of take a look at those and explore those uh, new problem types that we've incorporated into assessments. Um, and we're going to continue to to sort of add more problem types uh, as well, both to increase our, uh, you know, number of problems that are auto scored, but also uh, just to increase the uh, in terms of what are students being asked to do, making that as similar as possible to what students would do uh, outside of assessments on those curriculum based problems. And uh, so I just want to pause here and see if folks have any questions. Uh, it could be related to this or or anything else. Uh, I can always just say we'll we'll talk about that in a few minutes uh, once we get to the Q and A. But uh, any questions uh, folks have, you can share in the chat or share aloud. So I noticed after answering question number two, instead of a green check, I have a black check. Um, but it looks like maybe it would be teacher graded. Is that what that means? You're exactly right. So open response questions are the only problem type that we do not auto score. Uh, okay. And so when as a student, you won't get one of the you won't get like the green, yellow or red symbol indicating how you did. You okay. get that, you get that symbol that you saw. And then if the teacher decides to as you as the teacher decide to give a score and comment on that open response, mm -hmm. it'll it gets replaced with the symbol and then whatever feedback message you leave uh, mm -hmm. there. And uh, and since, and I'll, I'll go a little bit farther than that because I know Siobhan, you're just getting started, right? So yes. uh, in your in your assignment report, uh, you can actually, even though we don't auto score it, uh, you can in your assignment report, go to those open response questions mm -hmm. and part two uh, or problem two part B here is an open response and you'll see this assess button uh, or if you already put a score and you'll see the score and you can click that and mm -hmm. and get to this screen and we will put all of those open responses on one screen for you mm -hmm. uh, so that you're able to score and leave feedback on all of them all at once without having to shuffle through a bunch of papers. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So even though, like I said, even though we don't auto score those yet, uh, hopefully one day AI will get to the point where it can <laughs> uh, in a reliable way actually do that for teachers because that'll be a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, we do at least want to make it easier for you. And uh, and if te if you decide not to score those, it doesn't affect the student average. Uh, okay. So, all right. Thank um, you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions I can answer before we move on? All right. So we'll definitely have some more time at the end for, for Q&A. Uh, but for the teacher experience, there are uh, a couple of things I want to highlight as well. Uh, the first is uh, just an update to my problem sets. So whenever uh, before, when you would create problem sets, uh, you could basically only filter them uh, and you couldn't really move them around like they were just kind of in a fixed order. And so what you can do now is you can actually create folders uh, to, to organize your assignments into. 
uh, and even create folders within folders. So if you want to organize any custom problem sets you've created, uh, you can do that by clicking the new folder button within my problem sets. And I'll just go over here and, and show that. Give the folder a title. And then you can, uh, if you want to create subfolders, you can display, it's called children, but you can display uh, the, ind the individual subfolders uh, as tabs as well, uh, if you don't want to see it in the way that it displays normally. Um, so that's one feature. And then the other one, Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to point out here, drag and drop. So uh, notice that there's now this sort of uh, dot matrix uh, that you can use. Before, you couldn't move those problem sets around, but now you can drag them and drop them uh, wherever you want. So in addition to you know putting problem sets into folders, you can sort them in a way that makes sense for you as well. So just some simple functionality there to make my problem sets that much more useful. Um, and to clarify, my problem sets is when you've made a custom set uh, when you assign something, that then goes into my assignments. Uh, so uh, if you just assign something as is, like you don't make any changes or make a custom problem set, that's only going to live in, in my assignments. But if you make a custom problem set, that will live here in the My Problem Sets folder. And then the next uh, thing is that Teachers could already choose which problems to assign to students, but as those of you who are familiar with illustrative math or open up, where they had these multi-part problems, it used to be that those different parts of a problem came as a package deal. So you either had to assign all of that four-part problem or none of it. Uh, and so one feature that we added in in preparation for the school year is allowing teachers to assign uh, individual parts of those multi-part problems. Uh, now, one thing I'll point out with that is, you know, with IM, some of those parts build on each other. So you want to be careful about which problems you assign uh, an individual part from. But it's real. this can be really helpful if you know that there's this high quality part within a multi-part problem. You don't have enough time for students to do all of the parts, but you know if they can just do this one, uh, it'll you know help to demonstrate uh, whatever knowledge it is that you want them to leave class with. Uh, and, and if they don't, then you want to see that too, right? Uh, so when you go within a problem set, and I'm just going to navigate, uh, actually, I'll just go to the one I was just using, uh, you'll notice that uh, or no, let me go to a different illustrative one here. Um, if I go into, say, grade seven, unit two, lesson two here, you'll see in these practice problems, there are these, you know, part A, part B, part C, part D. You can still do, you know, select the entire problem set. That's the default. Uh, but you can, and then you can select all of that multi-part problem uh, by clicking the, uh, the first checkbox up here. But if you click the checkbox within an individual part, uh, you can assign just that part or uh, several parts, but not all uh, from that multi-part problem. Uh, and all you have to do again is uh, check that individual box within the specific problem part that you want to assign. Uh, so we added that. And I know teachers were uh, uh, asked quite a bit about, you know, oh, I'd love to be able to assign this, but I don't want to assign the other five parts of the problem. Uh, so now you can do that. And uh, I wanted to give folks just a chance to check out those two features. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put another three minutes on and give folks just a chance to uh, try out that drag and drop feature in my problem sets uh, and to also uh, try out uh, some of those uh, other features like folder creation and uh, assigning parts of multi-part problems just to get familiar with them and see if y'all have any questions. And we will come back together in about three minutes uh, before we move on to our content update. And feel free to share questions aloud or in the chat in the meantime. Happy to answer questions.
All right. So uh, if folks have any questions, you can feel free to share those aloud uh, just about those features or share in the chat. Happy to answer those. Um, <clears throat> so I'll pause for a few seconds and just see if folks have any questions before we move on. I'm a big fan of using strategic wait time, just in case. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. So uh, since we uh, have no questions, uh, I did want to speak to uh, the new content that we're adding. I know uh, some folks are kind of here to get an update on that and ask some questions about it. Uh, so we are currently in the process of digitizing uh, the IM360 student-facing problems, uh, student-facing materials. And, uh, you know, we know that a lot of districts and schools are switching over to IM360 or uh, maybe they're new to IM in general and they're starting with 360. So we wanted to make sure that we can meet that need. Uh, we are forecast to uh, roll out all of the middle school content uh, this winter. Uh, so we're looking at the winter of 2024 to finish that. Uh, and we're trying to expedite uh, Fill, uh, putting in all of the IM content or 360 content from the other grade levels as well. Uh, so, but I can't give a specific uh, time frame when that will happen. Uh, all I can say is uh, it will definitely happen within this school year, most likely before the spring. Uh, so, uh, but by the end of this winter of 2024, we will have all of the uh, middle school uh, IM360 content uploaded. One other thing that I'll say is uh, for teachers, you know, we have a lot of teachers who we may not host their content. Maybe they use a textbook or something like that. And they still found a lot of value in assessments uh, in a couple of different ways. So uh, let's say you're waiting for IM360 to come out. Uh, we have a huge content library that teachers can use for supplemental materials uh, that are still helpful for those interventions, uh, additional targeted practice, and you can even search for a specific curriculum. Uh, so like for illustrative math, we know that they use certain vocabulary terms, uh, have students uh, work problems in a certain way, very differently from certainly how I learn math. Uh, and so maybe you wanna find problems aligned to a topic or a standard to supplement what you're doing in IM360 in class, uh, and you want them to be aligned to how IM does things, right? All you have to do is go over here uh, to when you're on the find and assign tab and in search by standard, you can search for whatever standard you happen to be working on. Uh, and so I'm just going to choose uh, understanding equivalent expressions, a seventh grade standard. And we're going to show you all of the problems in our entire platform that align to that standard. Uh, you can see there's, uh, it's still percolating, but there are over 200 or at least 200 of them. Um, and once that list finishes loading, you can either click and add these to a custom problem set. Uh, you can scroll through them all if you want to, but you can filter for, let's say I only want to see those illustrative math problems. I can do that and it's going to uh, filter that search just for those problems. You can see even though it's just illustrative math, there's still 86 there are 86 problems from which you can actually uh, assign to students uh, and give them extra practice. Um, and then in addition to that, let's say you only want auto score problems. You just need some quick data so you can decide how to modify instruction for the next lesson. You don't have time to go through open responses. You can go to the content categories here and you can get rid of any of the types of problems that you don't want to assign uh, and just see uh, the types of problems that you would like to assign. Um, so I say all of that to say, uh, even if, if folks are waiting for IM360 to come out, we can still be very useful for teachers equitably implementing uh, their curricula. Uh, and so with that, I'll open up the floor and just see if folks have any questions about uh, 360. Brian, when you were just showing your screen, searching for um, a standard, there was a thing that said skill builder. What's the skill builder? Can you show that, please? That is a great question. I sure can. Uh, so skill builders are basically, uh, these are common core aligned and common core organized problem sets uh, where it's a, just imagine a huge set of problems in the background, like a set of 80 questions, right? Students are randomly pushed problems aligned to that standard. So each kid is kind of getting a different experience, right? And students, in order to complete that uh, skill builder, have to answer three problems in a row on their first attempt. 
Uh, so it's a way to, uh, you can use that for building fluency or to gauge mastery, or there are a few different purposes that teachers can use them for. Uh, and then students get up to 10 problems to attempt within a session before the teacher either resets them from their uh, assignment report or it automatically resets 24 hours later so that the student can try again. Um, so that's basically uh, a way that students can kind of get some extra practice. And uh, when you do your search, we'll always show you not just the problems on our platform, but also those skill builders. But you can find those in the content library here at the bottom and uh, go through and find them by grade level, uh, strand, and then specific standard. And uh, we have a lot of different skill builders, especially for middle school, uh, but we do have some uh, featured for uh, grades above and below middle school as well. Uh, and then just apropos of that, if you don't want students to have that get three right in a row and you're done type experience, you want them to just have some practice, uh, right? Our problem solving sets are also organized by grade level, by strand, and by specific standard. And these are just sets of five problems that are grab and go. You can push them out and assign them uh, and they can be helpful. What I'll say for folks, cause I know most of our users uh, teach with illustrative mathematics. Uh, this is more of that like very baseline skill knowledge. It's not, these are, these are problems that are probably uh, I guess you would say presented more in the traditional format. Uh, so they can be helpful, uh, but they're not going to help students interact with that uh, that secondary vocabulary uh, that we know uh, often comes about through, you know, the methods that IM teaches uh, students to solve problems. Uh, so that was a really long answer for your question, Jan. Uh, <laughs> any other uh, follow-up questions? Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. How, how did you get here? This yeah. Yeah, sure. So basically, when you're on the find and assign tab, if you scroll down through the content library, mm -hmm. you'll see the skill builders and problem solving sets are the uh, the third and fourth options from the bottom. Okay. Uh, while I'm down here, uh, some other things that teachers like to use, we have a, a ton of release state test items. So if you want to help kids get fluent with uh, sort of standardized test uh, type content uh, right. and practice with that. We have from all over the country, not every state, but we've got California, we've got New York, we've got Oregon, Washington, uh, and we have a ton of release date test items there as well. And then if you're just getting started with kids, we even have practice assignments that are designed just to get kids familiar with assistance oh. before you assign grade level content, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so assessments has a lot of different things that kids can do. It's you're better off and you'll get a better start getting kids familiar with that, those features and functionality, uh, before you start assigning your rigorous content, than kind of just pushing them in there without prompting and saying, all right, have at it. Uh, <laughs> and, right. and, yeah. And especially for those open response questions, there are a lot of options there. This student practice assignment for open response questions walks students through every different feature and functionality, uh, that they'll primarily be able to use. And then from there, all you have to do is say to the kids, okay, I want you to take a picture of your work, or I want you to use the drawing tool, or upload a picture from this other drawing tool I want you to use, you know. Um, but yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. So uh, what I want to do now is uh, open it up for the more general Q&A. Uh, before we wrap up. And uh, so basically you can ask about any topic. I can live demo things. I can uh, answer, you know, pedagogical questions about how to incorporate assessments. Uh, I'm sort of your one-stop shop. So uh, I'm going to open up the floor. You can feel free to post in the chat or share aloud first come first work, And I'm happy to answer any questions that, uh, that folks might have. I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I forget, and I'm not, I don't think this is new, but I forget what it is. When you assign an assignment to a class and you're, you know, going through and saying the class and the release date and due date, up on top it says assignment options or student experience. Mm -hmm. What are the differences? That's a great question. So uh, assignment options are just the more general settings that you put on the assignment, like the title, which classes you assign it to, or if you uh, pick from the assignees drop down, which specific students in those classes you want to assign to, as well as, as you mentioned, the release and due date. Uh, 
beyond that, once you've chosen those options, the student experience options are really about curating the student experience in the problem set. So, uh, for example, uh, choosing the order that they receive the problems in. Uh, you can choose linear, so they get the problems in the same order they appear in the curriculum, random, so each student is receiving those problems randomly, or student choice, they can see all of them at once and choose which problems to go into and complete in, in the order they desire. Uh, test mode means that, and th these little info box include all of this as well, so you don't have to remember it all right now, but test mode, uh, that turns off multiple attempts and feedback and student supports. So that's basically you enter your answer, it's one and done, no feedback, keep it moving. And that's supposed to be, uh, you know, better for the summative uh, experience. We are primarily a formative tool, and that's definitely what we're geared toward. But if teachers want to use us for a summative assessment, uh, that can be helpful. Um, and apropos of that, uh, our setting the time limit feature allows you to set a time limit up to 60 minutes uh, so that once students reach that time limit, they can always pause and stop working. But while they're working, once that time elapses, uh, if it's over with, they're automatically booted from the assignment uh, so that they can't work on it anymore. I totally, as a teacher, would have used this because I was all about timers for everything to create urgency because we know kids are wanting to stretch everything out to the furthest extent. No. No, we have five minutes. Okay, we have four minutes. We have one minute left, everybody. We're gonna come back together in 10 seconds. You know, that was me. So uh, love timers. And then redo is an adaptive feature that when you turn this on, uh, for any of those lesson-based materials, uh, not the unit assessments or any of other, other content, but for the IM lesson materials, anytime you see this uh, blue arrow uh, box symbol, that just means when you turn on redo, if a student's responding to that problem and they get it incorrect, they're automatically assigned a similar but not the same standard aligned problem. And then their score will reflect whichever of those two they did better on. Uh, so it just gives them that extra touch point of practice and feedback uh, if they happen to be struggling with a particular problem. Uh, and then finally, uh, we make it possible for you to remove student scoring entirely from the student experience because uh, we understand students need a chance for low stakes practice. Uh, they're not going to engage in challenging new material with you if they think that everything you're giving them is going to get graded for accuracy, right? So you can actually, you can even choose here, do I want students to get a score at the end or do I just want them to get symbols? And that way they never see a score. Um, as you can imagine, when a kid's seeing a score, they're automatically going to plug that into their prior knowledge. Oh, this must be the letter or the uh, number grade that I got. It's a number grade. That is not what we do. Uh, so, and in point of fact, the, that score that students get reflects the amount of challenge they experience. So you basically set up a negative association with perseverance if you use our scores as grades, right? Um, so we definitely recommend not doing that, but you can choose success symbols here and that will allow students to never see any actual numerical score uh, at any point in the uh, assignment completion process. Uh, so that's the student experience uh, settings and the difference between both of those sets of options. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Any other uh, any other questions I can answer uh, about the platform or just, again, it could be pedagogical questions about how do I make this work in my class, uh, anything like that. Can you show the teacher experience, the teacher side of it? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I sort of been starting off here as an example where I've drilled down into a specific lesson, uh, but basically uh, teachers can either use the search by standard tool to find problems aligned to a topic or a standard, or they can use the content library and navigate down to uh, a specific topic or a specific lesson in the case of like illustrative math. Once you go down to a specific problem set, you can either choose to assign from that problem set uh, a, a subset of problems or the whole thing. You could choose, let's say I just want to pull this one problem and add it to a custom set. Instead of clicking assign, you can click that down arrow and save it to a problem set, then go somewhere else, uh, find some other problems you want to add and save it to that problem set as well. Then you've got that saved right here in your in my problem sets. So you can assign that to whichever students you want. So that's helpful for if you want to modify an assignment. Maybe you have students that are uh, students with IEPs and general ed students in the same class, and you know you know that the students that have IEPs need they're supposed to have extended work time. Uh, for example, you can assign fewer problems to them. 
Uh, you can find, let's say you have students who, uh, you know, they're always on top of it and you want them to have some enrichment. You can uh, create a custom problem set that gives them uh, more challenging problems in their assignment, right? Uh, so you can create those custom problems. And then once you've actually gone through those assign time options, uh, which, I, which I just finished showing. So after you click assign, you choose those settings, you push it to kids, they've done the problem set. Then you get your assignment report data. And I'll just give a, a sort of brief mm. view of what that looks like. How did you get there? <laughs> <laughs> good question. <laughs> That's a good question. So uh, you can, I, I basically just went into the LMS. So in this case, I'm in Google Classroom. Mm. And okay. once you press assign, the assignment gets pushed into your LMS, right? And so it'll appear as an assignment with an embedded link inside of it. And when you as a teacher click that in your account, it takes you to the data for that assignment. Uh, when a student clicks it, it takes them into the assignment itself, or if they're done with it, it'll take them to their individual student report. Okay. So, so yeah, now you can always, within your assessments account, you can always click my assignments and filter for a specific class uh, and find the assignment reports here as well. Uh, but we also find that teachers like to, you know, within the LMS, you can organize things a certain way, create assignment folders or categories, you know, attach extra, uh, you know, supplemental materials to assignments. So you may just prefer to live in this space, but you have both of those as options. Um, and so I'm going to click into a populated report here and give you an idea just of what this looks like. And the, the primary thing is that we organize the data in two different ways. We'll give you the student data either organized by the problems you assigned or by the standards those problems are tagged with. Every problem in assessments is tagged with the Common Core standard. And you may be a teacher that's all standards based. Maybe you, uh, you, know, you wanna be able to target specific standards for intervention. You can always go and look at that data as well. But here it's organized by problem. And you can see, uh, we'll tell you the number of students for each problem. Uh, that answered correctly on their first attempt, answered correct eventually or with help, and then who were unable to arrive at a correct answer. Uh, most platforms are going to tell you percent right and wrong, which can be helpful, but it doesn't really take you all the way in terms of figuring out who do I want to get the different interventions I have designed, right? Whereas with this, you, you want to be able to respond instructionally in, in different ways to a kid who gets all the problems right on the first try, versus this student over here who maybe they got them right eventually, but they had to use hints, they did four or five attempts for each question, that student probably needs some more practice versus a student who they, they can't even get to a correct answer on their own. They have to kind of click through and uh, and they're showing you they don't know anything. You're gonna wanna respond to that student likewise in a, in a different way. And so we just kind of break it down in that uh, sort of easy to understand way. You can always click the X axis here uh, to see what those specific problems were and even expand it. If you want to talk about it with the kids, we recommend showing the data to kids and talking about it with the kids. And then you can also uh, under that is sort of our, this is our secret sauce, our, the thing that uh, makes our data most valuable. Uh, the detailed report where every column is a problem or problem part, every row is a student. And we're going to give you the averages across the class and for individual problems. So if you're trying to say, you know, I only have a few minutes for review, what are the one or two problems I need to go to, uh, to, you know, to really make this an impactful review before we go to the next lesson, we will tell you. Otherwise, what do you have to do, right? Because you may not, you probably don't have time to grade all those papers in, uh, with a one day turnaround, or if you're lucky, maybe you do. Uh, but let's say you don't, you come into class and you say, okay, did anybody have questions about the homework? Anybody have questions about the classwork from last class or the classwork we just finished? And what are the kids going to say? If you're yeah. lucky, right, no. If you're lucky, they'll even just, they'll say something, right? They'll say no, or I don't know, I don't think so. Whatever. Or a lot of the kids will just be silent. And you know that the students that need the most help are the most likely to not speak up, right? Well, when you show these data to kids, like the performance summary, that reinforces they're not alone when they're making mistakes on challenging coursework, number one. So uh, kids think every single thing that happens to them is like something that's unique in all of human history and it's only happened to them. Yeah, this is a way to break them out of that. And then when you come down here, you could say, well, look, uh, and I have teachers who will pull this up, hide the student names, which also randomizes the rows. Uh, so you can pull these data up in front of the kids and say, well, based on these average scores, what problems do we need to focus on? Take the guesswork out of it. Uh, because as I said, the kids are not going to tell you what you need to know uh, in order to target what's going to be best for review. 
Um, and then we'll tell you common wrong answers. So if three or more students put the same wrong answer, we will tell you what that wrong answer was and the percentage of students who answered incorrectly that put it. And in this case, you can see 100% uh, of students put either the wrong answer nine or the wrong answer one on this problem. So that can help you to pinpoint a misconception. Uh, if you see those light bulbs, that means we even give you an instructional recommendation. Now, these aren't universal, but uh, if you click that, we will actually give you a breakdown of an activity that you can use to engage students around that misconception. Uh, in this case, I think it's a my favorite no. Um, and then below that, you have every student row where you can see, did they use hints? How much time did they spend? Uh, maybe I see, okay, this student uh, had two incorrect attempts. Let me click that chip and see what those incorrect attempts were before they arrived at the correct answer. I had some students click show answer. I see that in bright red. Did they make their best attempt here or their best effort here? There are no, there are no X's next to it. So no incorrect attempts are here. So I know the student just clicked this to click through. Maybe they decided, oh, I can answer this one, but I don't know this one. So I'm just going to click through it and try to answer the next one. So it's really easy to tell who are the kids who are really trying versus the kids who are not, right? And once the kids, by the way, realize that you know this information, it like changes many things because kids often rely on, uh, you know, the fact that the teacher teachers are so busy, you may not be able to look at every single thing the kid does on that paper. Well, they're going to try to, you know, put in some thing, you know, write whatever on some things and hope that you just don't notice. Well, guess what? In assessments, you see everything very quickly. Uh, right. And then finally, uh, those open, you can always click the student's name to get more of a breakdown of the play by play of everything they do, uh, how much time they spent on each attempt, what did they do, were they correct or incorrect. Uh, and those can be helpful for those student one on one conferences or even parent conferences. Uh, take it out of the world of anecdotes. It's not about what you saw in class or whatever. Here's what the kid, here's what your student actually did. This is based on the activity that they did on the assignment. I can tell when they click show answer and they have no incorrect attempts here, they're not making their best effort on the question or utilizing the resources in class before they just skip things. And we need to see more perseverance, right? Um, and then likewise, let's say a kid comes up to you and says, oh, you know, I, uh, you know, I realize I just made a mistake on that assignment and I know what I'm doing. I just need to go back and, and do it correctly. You can always click the triple dot next to their name and delete their progress. And that'll allow them to click the same assignment in your LMS and, and uh, it starts them from the beginning. Uh, the standards view is pretty straightforward, but we will tell, instead of having each problem be a column, every standard is a column. We'll tell you the number of problems in the set aligned to that standard. If there's more than one, it goes into both. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, student performance averaged across the problems uh, on each of those standards. And as within the problems view, you, you can also sort. So let's say I only have time to target one standard uh, for reteaching today. I've got maybe I've got five minutes, right? And I need to release my students into a differentiated activity to address misunderstandings. Uh, maybe I have a high pro priority standard in 7GA1. I sort that. And then I know right off, okay, my students that got 80 and above, they're probably ready for some enrichment. My students that got uh, in that 50 to 60 range, they probably need some more practice. Uh, and then those students who did below that, those are the students I need to pull for some small group reteaching and maybe send them home with some practice at home or, you know, whatever. But it gives you, it just gives you the option uh, to target uh, your interventions based on single standards very quickly. Can you scroll to the, okay, so that 7G uh, to the top, 7GA1. Mm -hmm. Does that mean there's, there were two problems addressing right. that standard? That's right. Then mm -hmm. how did they get like... 63% and 38%. That's a great question. So if a student, uh, every time a student makes an incorrect attempt on a problem, or if they use a student support, it takes 33% off of their score. So you may have a student who got a 67 on that first problem. And then maybe on the next one, they got a uh, hundred or there are many different combinations, but uh, the average between the two problems, because they could get a hundred, a 66, a 33 or a zero. Uh, the, the, you'll end up with different uh, numbers that are outside of those uh, when you average them together. Does that make sense? Yes. So that standards view is just for that assignment. It's not cumulative. 
That that's right. And I'll be totally transparent with you. We are working on some summary data reporting for teachers uh, for sure. That is something that's going to come out. Uh, but our our wheelhouse is really you want that pulse check for this class on this assignment. We're going to give you the data you need to make a decision without having to grade all those papers in about sixty seconds. So that that's what we do really well. If you're looking more for the data trends over time and that sort of thing, that's something that's more of a work in progress for assessment. So, uh, but we are working on that. Any other uh, questions I can answer about assessments or or even troubleshooting any of those uh, big teaching and learning questions? I have a lot of them, but I don't want to take all your time if other people have questions too. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and ask one, and okay. we can always open up the floor again afterward. And if people still don't have questions, you can ask them. Um. So. I know we talked about this before. So those are percents. Any any chance that in the future you would go to like proficiency? Like uh, interesting. Uh so sorry, tell me more. Tell me more. Um like we have a proficiency grade book and we give our students feedback on you are proficient, you are developing, you are beginning. So instead of like if a student got two out of the two geometry questions correct, they would get a proficient. If they got one out of the two correct, they would be like developing. Yeah, that that's certainly I think that's an interesting idea. I think we don't we don't currently have that. I know it's not currently on the product roadmap. I think probably the reason why, and by the way, anytime you reach out to our support line and share those things, that okay. becomes a new feature request that we then share directly with product so that it we can get them to consider that. Uh my guess as to why we don't do that yet is because we we really want teachers to make the decision about what a score means to them. Okay. Uh we can give guidance. But uh, we kind of put the teacher in the driver's seat in that sense. Like, if you feel like students getting it right eventually is enough for something, maybe it, it can be. But maybe for another standard, you really need to see every kid get up to 100% on that problem in order to be confident, okay, they're they're ready to move on. And so, so yeah. So the stu student gets like a feedback symbol, a success symbol when they're finished. Is there a way for them to like, is there still a record of that if they go back into like the student view of their assignment? Yep. Uh, once they, so not only they get those student symbols as they go, they can okay. always go back to a previous problem if they want to okay. and, uh, and see how they did. But then when they're finished, they get to that student report. They can click that same assignment within the LMS and go back to that report anytime. Uh, oh, they, have, they get a student report in the LMS? That's right. So in the same link. So if, a, if I'm a student and I finish the assignment, I come back later and click that link. I'm just going to keep seeing the report for that assignment. And I can click the problems and see what I did. If the teacher leaves feedback or a score on an open response, I could see that too. Uh, and that stays there as long as the teacher leaves that assignment there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other uh, questions from, uh, I do want to go ahead. I know uh, some folks said that they got their questions answered. So before I uh, field any other questions, I did just want to uh, uh, put up the feedback survey for today's session because I'm really, really big on feedback. And uh, I want to make sure that any, any feedback that I can get from folks, I can use that to modify uh, future sessions. And so uh, I'm going to put this in the chin. Of course, I didn't copy paste it into something else. So I'm just going to go like this and, and copy it straight from the slide. Um, and uh, for folks who are who got your questions answered, you're ready to go. Uh, please just take about, it's not even one minute, it's like 30 seconds uh, to share your feedback for today's session. And I'd really appreciate it. Um, and you'll see today's uh, the 910 session, new and notable features. And with that, I'll go back over here. Uh, any other questions I can answer about uh, assessments or how we work or student experience, teacher experience? Also happy to- I don't go. have a question, but thank you, Brian. Yeah, no problem, Siobhan. And feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, you know, you can reach in support <laughs> reach out. Chances are it's going to be me. Okay. Uh, so anytime you have questions, you let me know. And I hope it, uh, everything works out well with your kids. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. I, I do have another question. <laughs> no, I want to answer it. Look, I'm, I'm here. You, you have me until 
Uh, what is it? Six o'clock. So ask, okay. ask the question. I don't want to be like a hog. Um, you, one of my special education teachers, uh, this is middle school. I, she sent you an email and I'm, she's like, well, I sent Brian's story an email, but I haven't heard back from him yet. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, she wants, um, she's working with a classroom teacher who really wants to use assessments. She's pretty tech savvy. And then the special education teacher wants to modify the assignments for her special education students, for students with IEPs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't think that's possible because like you said, you are, assessments is hosting, hosting the material for IM. And it's not like, uh, it's not a platform where you create an assessment. It, you just use the assessments that are there. Right. Well, and we are developing a builder where teachers can take and modify what's already in here, make their own versions or, or make questions. So that is something we're working on. I don't have it. I'm pretty sure if I give any kind of specific time frame, the, the product gods will come down and strike me down. But okay. it, is, it is happening during the school year. So that, oh. that, yeah, that, that is coming. I did reply today. Uh, I think she sent a oh. message yesterday and I happened to be yeah. out of office yesterday. Uh, yeah. But in uh, today, what I told her was, uh, so once a teacher assigns something, uh, just, you know, even if you're a co-teacher in that class, you have an assistance account, you've imported that class, you can't change that assignment that's already been assigned, but you can go to that content and assessments and choose a separate set of problems or make a different custom set. Uh, if you communicate with that teacher and say, assign these problems, but just not to the subset of students that I'm working with, then those kids yeah. won't get it and they can just get the assignment you send right so there are some ways yeah. yeah and when you earlier when you talked about the custom problem set that's mm -hmm. i jotted that down and circled it because i'm like that's what she could do right right exactly um and even if the the general education teacher creates an assign their own custom set uh again all they have to do is share that the id at the top of that custom set it'll appear either in the title and it's even here at the top uh right here share mm -hmm. that id the uh, the uh, co-teacher can search for that ID and then take out some problems, add in some other problems, whatever they want to do, and assign that to the subset of students that they're working with. Uh, so, you know, we're we're definitely big on, even though, you know, we're, we don't have that builder functionality, we want teachers to be able to assign mm -hmm. what they want to the subgroups of students that they want. So, um, follow-up question, we use Canvas as our LMS. Mm -hmm. And if, if those... If that teacher is a co-teacher on that account, mm -hmm. she could create a custom problem set and assign it because in Canvas, you can do student groups. Uh, she can create a custom problem set. She's going to have to choose the students in the group uh, whenever she assigns an assessment. So we don't in, we can't import uh, the any subgroups that are organized within Canvas, uh, but she can assign to those subgroup that subgroup of students in whatever iteration that she wants to. Okay, mm -hmm. that helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. responding to her email. Yeah, no, not a problem. Not a problem. And, and I'll just get as a sort of headline way to a, sum, a summary of it. The things mm -hmm. that we do with the LMS are basically we push the assignment and the data uh, and teachers have the ability to upload a score into the grade book if they want to. Uh, any of the other functionality we don't really uh, work with, but uh, but we at least allow that. The only, like I said, the only thing with those scores is if you're uploading them, you're going to want to change the assignment uh, assignment settings the way you want them and probably weight it as, as zero weight. Uh, because if you use a score from assessments as a grade, you're penalizing students for multiple attempts, et cetera. So um, the, the other mm -hmm. thing I'll say about accessibility for uh, for your special education co-teacher yeah. is that we work really well with Google Translate. We work really well with Google Read Aloud, so the browser extensions. Uh, and then we also, the, t the student experience can be magnified up to 250% and look exactly the same. Uh, so uh, students who have who are vision impaired as well can access our platform and the color schemes uh, have been updated to be uh, uh, colorblind friendly as well. Okay. What did you mean by if you upload the data mm -hmm. to put so, it into your... Sure. So uh, in the assignment report, we don't do it automatically because again, it's, you know, uh, we don't recommend putting the scores in as grades in the grade book, but if a teacher wants to upload a score, uh, all they have to do is in the detailed report here, they can click the triple dot and it's going to say upload to yours, what's your teachers would okay. see Canvas. 
um, and that will allow them to push that score uh, into an entry in the grade book uh, oh, no. from there. Mm -hmm. To Canvas. But then <clears throat> the teacher would have to adjust the scale and everything you said. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the only, uh, the only, again, we don't put a ton of capacity on this particular feature. So okay. there, there's no way to talk to like control those other settings on our end, but the teacher can always do that on the, on the LMS side if they, if they so desire. And then the other thing we do is uh, if teachers want to pull this data offline, maybe they mm -hmm. want to upload into some bigger student information system that folks are using, they can download this detailed report as a CSV and get those student scores off, you know, and be able to view them offline or upload them into something. Okay, that, thank you so much. This is very helpful. Yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, so I know we're at time, but just want to uh, see if, uh, Mark, did you have any questions? I know we've uh, corresponded a bit via email because uh, I work with uh, you all over at PG County in Maryland. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and Jan, did you have any other questions that uh, you wanted help with? Not at this time. I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Definitely reach out if you uh, if anything else comes up. Happy to help. Uh, and uh, you know, I was I was a public school teacher for a long time in D.C. Uh, I know what it's like to you know to deal with uh, you know to deal with the day to day of the challenges of how do you give high quality instruction to kids. So that motivates my work every day, and that's why I go the extra mile. So all you have to do is uh, reach out, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, you have a good one. Yeah, Brad, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you, Mark. Sorry, I was uh, following. I was following this. I'm new to assessment, but I've been using it. I've been using it in one of my classes. Uh -huh. Especially because in my school, um, my kids, they do not yet have their Chromebook except one class. So uh, I've given them like three, three or four assignments assessment already now. So some of the future, I, I, I'm happy that I, I attend the, 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 the webinar so that I could understand it better because I, I created those uh, a group of work or these folders. I did it by myself. I tried not to go around and do it. My question is this, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible when you create an assignment for my assessment, send it to students? Now, it just probably, it gets it into Canvas. It, it cannot, is there another future that, that will allow me to create, uh, if I to put it in Canvas in a different link uh -huh. that I can have to put it elsewhere in Canvas? Sure. So uh, the, the links to our assignments, like if you, you know, if you push an assignment into Canvas, for example, yeah, uh, yeah. the link that you have access to. So like if you click that embedded link and you copy it, uh, that link will work anywhere for that group of kids. So uh, as long as the student, but it only it's roster specific. So if uh, a student from another class accesses a link that yeah. you assign to this class, they'll get an error. They won't be able to access it. But if I, let's say I have this class here and I just want to put a bunch of assignment links into like a doc or into a yes. different, you know, different place. All you have to do is go here and uh, right click and copy that link. And uh, even though it's from your student account or your teacher account, uh, when they click it and they get recognized as a student, it's going to take them into that assignment. Hold on one second. I'm sorry that uh, because I'm right now driving, so I'm following for my phone. So yeah, no I'm worries. clicking on the link. Um, you are clicking on the link from what? From Canvas or from Assessment? Uh, so you can copy it. Uh, you can copy it from either place. It's probably easier from Canvas because you can just go to that embedded link in the assignment. And, and actually, let me uh -huh. see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a Canvas account really quickly. Bear with me for just a moment. Um, let's see here. I'll do an incognito window. Um. Actually, I was trying to see if I could copy it from assessment because when it publishes in Canvas, okay, I have no control over it. If I can go in there and change it again. But if I'm creating, if I'm trying to organize, like I'm trying to organize my week where I create, I put it on the calendar. So I want to create that assignment in such a way that I can get a link and go uh, put it in my calendar somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how I could, copy that link from assessment. Like when I just, I create my set of my set of problems, I select the problem, I create it, then I choose the class, then I adjust the due date and all those stuff. Then 
I just when I just click it, just send it. I have nothing else to do. I just go in. I just actually have to go in canvas and see how if it appears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I if I understand you correctly, I think um you were saying that you wanted to be able to add assignment links into like a calendar or uh or put those assignment links into other places. You can do that. Once you assign something, uh you can't you can't edit the anything in the assignment except for the title and I think maybe the release date and the due date. Um uh -huh. But it's also you can also always easily delete that assignment and reassign it if you want to. Uh, okay. If you wanted to, if you wanted to change it, uh, that that does get a little bit, you know, uh, you know, obviously it creates a little bit of work, right? But you can always yeah. go and 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 do that. Um, and you can also, if you go into assessments, let's say you already have that assignment and you just want to make one little change and you've already assigned it. It's a custom set. So you don't want to have to go in and rebuild it. Uh, you can go over here uh, to that assignment in the My Assignments tab, click the triple uh -huh. button and click Reassign. And that's going to allow you to immediately uh, reassign that, that custom problem set with whatever settings you want. Uh, or, uh -huh. or, for example... Uh, you could, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, like I said, when you, when you click edit assignment, that will let you change the title and the release date uh, and the due uh -huh. date. Uh, but other than okay. that, once you've assigned it, you can't unless you uh, assign it again. Okay. Yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Did you have any follow-up questions there? No, no. I need to get home and try it, and then I'll probably send an email in case I have a problem. Like, because right now I'm still driving, that's... Uh... Yeah, trying trying so it to uh -huh. Yeah, trying it out is always going to be uh, a good way to you know kind of figure it out and explore. And then, as you know, if you want if you have any issues, reach out. I'm going to put my uh, email in the chat. I think we've emailed directly before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I have your uh, email address. Yeah, well, you know what? It's okay. Email me anytime you have questions. I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, we work uh, the county. Uh, we work directly with PG County, so. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have guaranteed that we will provide uh, teachers with support when they reach out to us. So, uh, you know, feel free to email me if you have questions. and I'll be more than happy to answer those uh, directly. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And then if you would, just before you before you hop off, uh, just uh, in the chat, I'll put our feedback survey. So if you could complete that feedback survey for me, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll just kind of stay okay. on if, unless you have any other questions. Uh, we'll close out after that. Okay, give me one second. I need to get the okay, I'll do that. Oh, thank you. See. Oh, 